Look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. That chatter, that chatter nailed it. Okay. He nailed it. I want to be palatable. I want to be educational and I want to have fun. Okay. And the fun stuff that I do sometimes bugs people when they're like, dude, what are you doing? Why are you reacting to TV shows? What are you doing? Why are you reacting to, I don't know, Twitch drama? Dude, what are you doing? Why are you collaborating with other streamers instead of doing something else? Like that's important or consequential. There's news going on. And part of the reason why I do that is because it serves a higher purpose. It serves a larger purpose when I do fun, when I do dumb, when I do have fun, for example, right? It serves a larger purpose to ultimately make myself more palatable and approachable to normies. Otherwise, I would literally feel immediately like uh, I am someone who is not approachable at all because of the subject matter that I cover. And that's part of the reason why I've been able to grow such a large community of like-minded individuals as well. That's how it works. The fact that you love what you do helps tremendously. I mean, the reason why I love what I do is because of you guys though. The reason why I love what I do is because of you. If you were toxic, if this space was awful for me, and sometimes it gets really terrible, I would, I would hate it. I would see this as a job. But the reason why I can love what I do and be super passionate and find this to be incredibly fulfilling is because of you guys. <laughs> Yo, I stole Maya's phone because she sucks and she is stupid. She doesn't deserve a phone. You know who deserves this phone chat? You. You deserve fun. So I'm just gonna give this to you and it's gonna be fantastic. Hey, hey, I swear to God. Hey, hey. What the f? What is this? This is Art of Hasanabi? What is this? Thank you, Asanox, for me using your voice. It's been a while since live streaming was known only for its gaming content. The industry has changed a lot in the last three to four years as we showcased in the previous episodes about Ludwig and Miskiff. It's not just about games anymore. Today's streamer underlines this once again. And I'm not exaggerating if I say that this man has changed and influenced the live streaming world forever. And I would say even more so than what Miskiff or even Ludwig have done for this industry. In short, I would describe his streams as educational, infuriating, silly, hot, hilarious, controversial, political, of course, and extremely entertaining. And it doesn't really matter if you believe in his politics or not. You can clearly tell that he really wants to educate his audience how the world actually works. This is the controversial streamer who keeps getting away with it. The shit-talking left-wing political commentator who was once the most subbed and most watched streamer on Twitch. Hassan. Hey, the n-word, it's always... What do you think black people... What a f this is really good editing. Holy shit. Okay. Tiny is head on. Okay, dude. A guy named Hassan Piker. Hassan Piker. Hassan Piker. Hassan Piker. This guy is Hassan. Congratulations to Hassan. Why do so many of you try to actively undermine everything I say? I'm saying the opposite. <laughs> 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 oh my god. I'm just kidding. I vow to protect all queens. I like jerking off the porn. Hi, Hassan. Hassan Abi, you're fucking dope. Hi, Hassan. Hassan is the hottest. Hi, Daddy Hassan. Hey, Hassan. <laughs> Dude, this is, how this is really well done so far. Jesus Christ. Man who speaks out really good editing. Be so entertaining. And most importantly, how can he be the most watched streamer on Twitch in 2020? Hassan is universally known for its unfiltered and infectious opinions on all sorts of things. From politics from a socialist perspective to everyday internet content. Uh, he's 5'8", dude. I don't know how the f*** he does it, but he can talk about something forever. And no matter how insignificant the topic. That's a talent I think no other streamer has. True. At least to this degree. The difference between an ANCAP state and an ANCOM state is that you can have like something that resembles a state. And the endless babbling about, I don't know, why he can't come to Belle Delphine porn is always so insane to watch because I'm always like, how the f*** can you keep talking about the same topic for 30 minutes straight? <laughs> I could not come to the Belle Delphine porn. And his streaming times are also insane. He streams like every single day for 8 hours straight. At the end of the day, at least we can all agree, I saw this small. <laughs> 
and like sing this in a man long holds time a lot of today. information Chat. in there. Glad I you ask him. Some yeah, I have the bibliography of all all manner of cussy. Now, why the fuck should I watch a huge Turkish guy with a tiny head ramble on for hours about why the system is failing us? You look like the oh, slow bro. kid in a phys ed class, dude. <laughs> Believe me, I ask myself this question all the time, but I can't help myself. As soon as Hassan opens his mouth, I'm glued to the screen. I'm an incel. His unfiltered chatter is so incredible. Wait, hold on one second. Murad! Oh my god, dude. He's ha Murad is having a pool party in the background right now. And it is so goddamn loud. He's having a pool party by himself, okay? He's in the backyard. He's working on his motorcycle. It is so goddamn loud. I'm going to lose my mind. I have to go. Uh, here, I'm going to play the video. I'm going to have to go yell at him the infectious that it captivates you 90 percent of people show up to those court dates um for the record because these people legitimately want to be in the country without fear of the gestapo hunting them as miskiff hassan doesn't take himself too seriously it wasn't Murad, it was chris i was wrong as well some people are insanely lucky like myself he knows he's a 30 year old man sitting alone in his room whining and screaming for hours while his mom occasionally puts food on the table for him so what's in this dish um it's a surprise that's it? That's it. It's mom's surprise. The fact that he knows he's a loner who spends eight hours in a closed room makes him so relatable because every chatter on Twitch knows what that feels like. Hassan has a ton of clips and stream highlights channels on YouTube. The thing is though, none of them are his. Each account was created by someone in the community. These this is channels really well. This is one of the best videos done on me in general because like, uh, it's obvious that this is a person who's a Hasanabi head who made this, you know what I mean? It's the Hasanabi Clips Industrial Complex. However, Hassan doesn't care if these channels profit from his content. Someone could make thousands and thousands of dollars from his work and he wouldn't care. I hope you guys make money. I do not have a problem with these fucking channels. Oh, and uh, yeah. He's also hot. He's a Turkish god. Hassan is probably the most attractive. Hassan's really cute. What if I said that- I swear to God, I started getting canceled more during COVID because like, I think I just, I gained weight and I it grew out my hair and it was in the awkward hair growth phase. I'm not even kidding. I legit think that like, that was what it was. They were like, oh, you can't get away with it anymore. You just don't look as good. F you. Straight up. Hassan's better looking. I'm, te I'm testing it. I'm testing it. I'm testing this. I'm in my slut era. I'm testing it. I'm in my slut era and I'm testing it. Hassan is the number one React streamer, so he doesn't really have to come up with content because he just reacts to content himself. I'm not gonna lie, this is a really cringe take from Felix. He is an unfiltered, shit talking, progressive democratic socialist who labeled himself as a provocative gamer in his early streaming days who loves to shit on Ben Shapiro. Yikes, dude. If that doesn't sound like great content, I don't know what does. If masculinity and femininity existed on such binary terms, then how am I and Ben Shapiro in the Abby same Abby category? Abby. It's no surprise that a controversial streamer like Hassan has been embroiled in a number of controversies. Some of them were more serious and questionable. Uh, you said America deserved 9-11. Did you mean that? No. Within context, I was simply referencing the fact that all of the foreign policy decisions have a direct consequence. I love the, I, I love the edited version of this where it says, yes. I love that. So, uh, you said America deserved 9-11. Did you mean that? Yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. Boomerang effect, rather, if you will. And then there's... Favorite word, what's your favorite word? My favorite word is cracker. It's just a fun word to say. Cracker. These controversies spread like wildfire in the live streaming world and even in some mainstream media. All eyes were on Hassan. These scandals undoubtedly boosted his view count and clout. All memes aside, his streams and perspectives can actually be very educational and informative as well. Talking about the capitalist workplace where adults spend 80% of their lives working for a job where they are working for a wage they have no control over their own lives you can't wear whatever you want you can't say whatever you want you can't do whatever the f you want you are but a cog in a much larger machine you're basically substituting the undemocratic design away from the state yeah. to an undemocratic design in the workplace where the expectation is that it's supposed to be undemocratic where there is some sort of like semblance of a true meritocracy when no such thing exists his positive socialist viewpoints are a very refreshing one that you don't often, if ever, see in the media. 
For example, he talks about systematic oppression and inequality in a capitalistic society and how it has gotten worse in recent years. I'll be honest here, these topics are neither lighthearted or easily digestible. Watching Hassan's streams can get you very angry and f How do you say so much but so little? What do you... That's, that's your criticism out of that? When I was describing like uh, the authoritarian construct of a capitalist workplace and how it's organized and your lack of awareness over that simple subject and that was the that was your analysis in that that's crazy man frustrated i thought i was spitting there but i guess not nine month chatter my As bad there seems to be no end to this don't yell at the chatter we might be misunderstanding them however what i love about watching hassan is that he mitigates the pain and frustration a bit he softens it by commenting on it seeing him talk so passionately and angrily about an issue can be kind of cathartic as he expresses the frustration that we all feel Hassan knows he can't talk about death and misery for 8 hours straight, so he reacts to random internet videos on YouTube for a change. And this balance of lightheartedness and heavy topics make his streams so unique and versatile. This guy nails it. I mean, straight up. This is a Hassan Abihead who, who made this clearly because he nails it. This is, this is my ultimate goal. This is my overarching goal is to be palatable, digestible, while talking about complex uh, socioeconomic standards that people are subjected to, why you feel angry the way that you do, and how to change it as well. Um, but also, have fun while doing that. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's really important. Oh, I can smell it now. Oh, it smells like dirty. Oh, my. It smells like dirty. <laughs> you don't have to agree with his politics to appreciate his influence in the live streaming industry. And I still find it pretty amazing that a political commentator was the most watched channel on Twitch, which is a gaming platform. Which year was it? 2016 or 17? When the whole anti-social justice warrior and Gamergate movement began on YouTube? Jesus Christ. The rise of Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, Leafy, and so far and so on. These Weasley little liars from the right libertarian pipeline changed me. I was slowly but surely being turned into far-right incel without even realizing it. But thanks to left-leaning content creators like H Bomber Guy, Philosophy Tube, and especially Hassan, I was able to pull myself out of there. Watching yeah. your streams, Hassan, makes me more and more realize how the world actually works. I don't know if that's a good thing. Dude, this was brilliant. Very well done. Really good editor too. Holy shit. That was awesome. That was yo, go show go show the homie some love. This guy is this guy is great. Ben Horman. Very obvious, but you might be digestible, but you do forget key things like the top of the hour ad break that you missed. No, I didn't miss it. I already ran it. Go leave a nice comment there too. Um damn, this shit's been out for months too. I hadn't I had not seen it. Um I really need to do this more. I need to boost like positive video essays and stuff in this community uh to to partially uh, you know showcase their talents but also if i'm going to be selfish about it to you know um show the the rest of the ecosystem that like you know you can also cut videos by being positive and it doesn't also always have to be like the bottom of the barrel bullshit commentary um so yeah go go blast this boys people have tried to link it before yeah well you know but yeah this is one of the best videos that i've seen uh on the matter when i when they said i don't know if knowing how the world works is a good thing i felt that yeah they only have 600 subs like that's i mean they had 330 right now when i'm looking at it and i haven't refreshed it yet but that's crazy that they only had um now they have 800 subs check his logs oh my god hi chat yeah dude you're great man hi guys i'm new here how are you all doing greetings from germany damn the best chatter literally the best chatter in the space look at this be more like this guy, okay? Be more like him. Chats so little, only comes in to say positive things. Anyway, um, really, really good, dude. You're really good at editing. I mean, holy, the intro was fire. Uh, but yeah, go like the video and uh, and leave a nice comment there. I think I'm gonna tweet about it too. Okay, this video absolutely nails what I try to accomplish in the streaming space. There you go. I tweeted that too. So if you wanna. Spread it around. You can go ahead and do it. Have you watched Nick is not green video about streamers yet? No. 
The last point of you pulling him out of the far right pipeline is so true for me too. No, there's a lot of people that we've if we've done this for. I mean, you guys play a role in that as well. Look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, um, I mean, that chatter, that chatter nailed it. Okay. He nailed it. I want to be palatable. I want to be educational. And I want to have fun. Okay. And the fun stuff that I do sometimes bugs people when they're like, dude, what are you doing? Why are you reacting to TV shows? What are you doing? Why are you reacting to I don't know, Twitch drama. Dude, what are you doing? Why are you collaborating with other streamers instead of doing something else? Like that's important or consequential. There's news going on. And part of the reason why I do that is because um, uh, like it, it serves a higher purpose. It serves a larger purpose when I do fun shit, when I do dumb shit, when I do have fun, for example, right? It serves a larger purpose to ultimately make myself uh, more palatable and approachable to normies otherwise would literally feel uh immediately like uh, i am someone who is not approachable at all because of the subject matter that i cover and that's part of the reason why i've been able to grow such a large community of like-minded individuals as well you know what i mean that's how it works the fact that you love what you do helps tremendously i mean the reason why i love what i do is because of you guys though the reason why I love what I do is because of you. If you were toxic, if this space was awful for me, and sometimes it gets really terrible, I would, I would hate it. I would see this as a job. But the reason why I can love what I do and be super passionate and find this to be incredibly fulfilling is because of you guys. There's a lot of people out there who are like, I'm past it. I've passed the Hasanabi stage in my leftist development. All he does is like mainstream. He's a bad advocate for leftist ideas. And it's like, why is he not debating the efficacy of like, or the ethics around that's to be a good leftist and be mainstream and have people uh you know approach our uh, way of viewing the world and i'm like dude you're i'm sorry i think you're wrong you know what i mean like the the ethics and and uh effectiveness of like legalizing cp or ethical cp is not i don't think uh a, a good way to to make yourself more approachable to the norman to the average person okay but hey listen some people like that okay and I don't mean CP, I mean debates around it, okay? And, and it, you know, go off after uh, those people. That's fine. You know, there there is, those people are extremely online. Those people are constantly, you know, those people are constantly looking for a place to also get leftist uh, content. So I, I see that as a serving a purpose. Heard me from very bigoted and right-wing so to socialist via your hogwash content. You should do more. Yeah, I love hogwash content. But that's why, that's why I, you know, that's why I cover like cringe TikToks and do shit like that. You know what I mean? Because, well, one, I enjoy it and I want to have fun. And two, I'd rather flood the marketplace with my attitude and my approach than leave that ground to weirdo neckbeards. You know what I mean? Leftists can talk about self-help as well. Leftists can play video games and have fun as well. Leftists can laugh as well. It doesn't always have to just be... This is problematic. That is problematic. This is, I'm going to woke scold you for this. I think there should be no joy in life. And you, I, every waking moment of mine is, is a, an endless sequence of pain and torment. So I'm going to make sure yours is too. Like, I'm not like that. I'm just a normal dude. Okay. As normal as one can be while spending eight to 12 hours every day on the internet by myself in a room. So not very normal, but you know, the kinds of mental illnesses that I have is the exact same kind that you do, you know? So it works but also at the same time it's still approachable to all the normans that are in the outside world so there is that too um thank cool thank you for the tank of the subs Does that makes sense like for one reason or the other the type of content i cut for some reason no matter what happens is still relatable and approachable to normies it might not be to you if you're extremely online and the more online you are the more the less likely you are to enjoy what i do and say because you're like well this guy he just reminds me of the bullies that me over in the real world but here in the internet space i dominate so him but you know those people still run the world right because you're a bro i am i am a bro i i'm toxic i get emotional i get angry i'm over the top sometimes right but ultimately it, it doesn't matter it's just like you know i'm a human being of course we're all going to have uh, flaws like this I work on them. I try to make sure that it doesn't get in the way, right? I'm not a perfect person. And the, the expectation that I need to be perfect is ridiculous. I'm a dumbass, but at least I recognize that I am a dumbass. But no matter what, there is one thing I am. And when you notice it, people don't actually 
shit on me for that. Maybe they'll change it and they'll start to hit me on that too. But there's one thing that motherfuckers never say, and that is inauthentic. I'm just unapologetically myself. I tell you what my biases are. I tell you what I believe in. And I will always tell that to you, no matter what happens. You know? Immediately, Hasanabi is inauthentic. Thank you. Then again, it doesn't stop people from like literally repeating things that I, uh, I say about myself all the time. Like when I say I'm a dumbass. Or, no, people definitely call you a grifter, which is hilarious. I think people that say you're a grifter uh, don't really... I don't think they know what grifter means. I think they're just saying that. A lot of uh, weirdos do call you a fake socialist, though. Yeah, I, it's just like... That is more so uh, a, a severe lack of understanding of what socialism means or what the word grifter means, I think. Because there's plenty of things that I could be doing if I was a grifter. Like, there are a million different avenues that are significantly better than this be a grifter so it's always silly when people say that you know did you talk so much by yourself is it weird discussing with real people instead of pausing you actually have to wait for them to finish no it's awesome i love talking to people like this supposed to show a small victorian child gonna cop dude i, I love this i would cop this Motherfuckers be saying Ang angles was a grifter yeah i mean dude my man literally owned a factory if we're being straight up lennon had like eight rolls royces these are all right-wing talking points against leftist people. And I am not a serious, like, leftist revolutionary leader like they were, okay? Or a theorist. I'm a entertainer. They'll try to make me out to be something different, okay? Um, can we move on from content that is just, isn't just you defending yourself from hate? It's becoming 50%. I mean, I'm trying to make that into something fun, too. Like, we watched a fun video. So let's move on to why dating sucks in 2022 from this incel. That was a mistake. So you we're going to take a your look chat, here. Your friends? I've heard some... I don't consider chat individually as, as individual human beings, Just but one my organism. community, my community is one big organism. I do absolutely. I have a negative and bad parasocial relationship with my chat. <laughs> Chat's about to like form a thing about like, I'm not your friend, like come to life matrix style. No, literally. I mean, it's not healthy. I recognize that it's not healthy. I get like upset. You know this. I get upset and sad when I can't stream. Yeah, it's weird. Like he talks to you guys more than he talks to his own family, which is. Really okay, stop. Sad. Okay. We don't have to. Own me like that, okay? Fox over his feelings, bro. See, chat saying we are not your friend. Now you did this. I want everyone in chat to individually tell you that you're not their friend. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. 